So this is basically the shake up part two as SmackDown Live rolls up. And well, what do you know? Kevin Owens, the United States Champion. So the mid card title switched shows. Okay, fine. So he, Kevin Owens, he's all clean cut now. He's in a suit carrying the United States Championship, and he gets in there and he's like, "Yeah, SmackDown Live is now the Kevin Owens Show." <laughs> okay, yeah, the Kevin Owens Show. All right, so basically, he's it's the Kevin Owens Show no matter where he goes. Yeah, that's part of his stick. But he has the nerve to say that Canada is much better and makes much better athletes and stuff like that. And it's like, eh, that's debatable. It really depends on which sport. I mean, come on. Then he calls out the whole SmackDown locker room and saying that, yeah, he's going to be the premier champion of SmackDown and he's not there for anyone else except himself. Okay, yeah, and he's the new face of America because he's the United States champion. Okay, fine. So out comes Baron Corbin, and he's like, look, you can't beat me. I, you know, <laughs> battled Dean Ambrose last week because he beat Ambrose last week, and Owens couldn't even beat Ambrose on Raw. So, yeah, he's like, hey, you can't beat me. <laughs> okay, yeah. He's like, look, I beat Dean Ambrose so bad that he ran the raw. And he and Ambrose beat you so bad that you took your tail and put it between your legs and came to SmackDown. And it's like, wow, okay, fine. And by the way, he's owed a championship match. Baron Corbin has pointed that out because, yes, he's still owed a championship match. And since he's there and he has a title, so he's going to challenge him. And Owens is like, you don't deserve it. Oh, yeah, the whole heel shtick about you don't deserve it. Sami Zayn comes out. <sighs> oh, Sami Zayn is finally on SmackDown Live. He says yeah, he's finally on SmackDown Live. And Owens is like, no, you can't. You can't be here. This is a bad dream. You can't be here. And, oh, and Sami Zayn's like, yep, I'm here. And I'm finally on SmackDown Live. AJ Styles. <laughs> Comes out and he's like, "This is the house. The Smack. This is not the Kevin Owens show. This is SmackDown Live. The house that AJ Styles built, and he's still there. Yeah, he's like, and I'm still here. All right, that's cool. That's fine. AJ Styles still on SmackDown. So we've seen two, you know, acquisitions of the freaking shakeup. Now look, I understand that a mid card title has to be on each show. It didn't make any sense for." the United States Championship and the Intercontinental Championship to be on Raw, but it was only for one night, so oh well. Daniel Bryan comes out and he has an announcement saying that, okay, Kevin Owens will still defend his United States Championship at Payback against Chris Jericho. He will not defend that championship until that time. But whoever wins between Jericho and Owens, most likely Owens, they will be the United States Champion on SmackDown Live. Okay. I wonder how that's going to play out. But he says that he announced, okay, Daniel Bryan announced a triple threat match because whoever wins that triple threat match will be, well, not the number one contender, but will receive a United States Championship title shot down the road between Sami Zayn, AJ Styles, and Baron Corbin. Okay, and of course that's the main event of the show. But anyway, you have Eric Rowan going against Randy Orton. And they're trying to showcase Eric Rowan as a threat. It may be a little too late for that, but he had a good showing in this match. Until Randy Orton, you know, went to that place. Yeah, and he, you know, does his little Bill Cosby dance or whatever. And fucking, yeah, he pounds on the ground. Like, eh, 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 all right. That Bray Wyatt stuff appears and stuff like that. And Bray is like, yeah. Even though Bray is on freaking Raw and Bray now has no chance of winning the WWE Championship at Payback. Not even on Payback. Wait a second. When are they going to actually go to get, uh, go against each other? We don't even have a freaking date yet. All I know is it's going to be a House of Horrors match. And uh, see you soon in the House of Horrors. So after that, the lights come back on. 
Randy Orton gets laid out by the steel steps. Ding, 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 ding. Wait, was that a fucking DQ? And then, in a very slow fashion, I thought there was going to be an RKO, Eric Rowan lifts Randy Orton up and gives him the full Nelson slam. So Eric Rowan actually walks away for once and not get embarrassed and not get an RKO and not get laid out. It's like, okay, so you, are you going to try to do anything with Eric Rowan or not? <laughs> because you need to establish more motherfucking people. But that also comes with the draft. Speaking of which, the Usos are still on SmackDown and so are American Alpha. And they actually face each other for their SmackDown tag team titles. In a pretty good standard tag team match, the Usos actually fucking win. So, American Alpha basically is vanquished from the tag team title scene for the time being. But after the match was the most interesting part because the Shining Stars show up. Who cares, okay? Who fucking cares? Even though they sent a message to American Alpha when they put Chad Gable in a powerbomb slash backstabber. But again, it's like, who the fuck cares? It's assigning stars. What, you're going to repackage these motherfuckers again to actually make them contenders or to actually take them seriously? I'm not taking them seriously for now. I, I just, I'm just not. Welcome to the Shining Stars. Shining light of the Caribbean. Look. No, okay. It's just. Oh, Epico and Primo. Oh, so now they're just Epico and Primo? They're not the Shining Stars anymore? Wait. Are there going to be matadors again? One is going to dress as a matador. Just bring Carlito to the fucking show and have them run a three-man faction. Just do that shit. I would accept that. But the Shining Stars as a threat to American Alpha. Come the fuck on, man. No one believes in that shit. No one. Uh, look, if you believe in that, look, comment below. I would like to know why. But fuck that. It's just... Uh, speaking of fuck that, Mojo Raleigh against the newly acquired Jinder Mahal. Oh, we don't give a fuck about Jinder Mahal, and much less we don't give a fuck about Mojo Rowley. I don't. I don't give a fuck about either of these guys. So having them in their match, it was like, eh. oh, and guess who's in attendance? The same motherfucker that was at WrestleMania that fucking, you know, did a shoulder tackle or whatever to fucking Jinder Mahal to get him eliminated. Out of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Oh, Kronkowski is there. And, well, what do you know? It's payback. Outside of the ring, he actually throws his fucking drink, I think it was beer, in the face of Jinder Mahal. Jinder Mahal goes back in the ring. So does Mojo Raleigh, and Mojo finishes him off. And that's it. I'm not taking Mojo seriously. I'm just not. No. I'm. So he won the Battle Royal. You're saying that he's going to be a threat? You're saying that he's going to get a middle card championship sooner or later? Is that actually going to fucking happen? <sighs> so, Shane McMahon comes to the ring and he actually talks about the women's division on SmackDown Live. And it's like, okay, he invites the whole women's division to the ring. He introduces them all. Naomi, he introduces fucking Natalia, Carmella, who the fuck cares, and he introduces Becky Lynch. SmackDown has acquired... New women. But the first one that he announced kind of trolled everybody, and I kind of laughed at it. He's like, okay, yeah. She's a daughter of a Hall of Famer. She's a second-generation wrestler. Tamina! <laughs> I kind of giggled at that. I was like, ha, huh, nice trolling. Nice trolling on your part, Shane. Even though we don't give a fuck about Tamina. She could be a threat if they want her to be. But we don't give a fuck about Tamina. We just don't. And Shane was like, oh, you thought I was going to mention somebody else? And he actually does. Charlotte is now on SmackDown. Look out, women on SmackDown. The queen has arrived. James Ellsworth actually got the microphone before that, though. And he's like, the only people that need to tune in is to see oh, Carmella. And Naomi actually gets the phone and the microphone and actually makes a threat to fucking James Ellsworth. And it's like, ugh, God, this is... Just give the belt to the fucking queen already. Just just fucking do it. Just, here, queen, here, here, here. Fuck, well, I mean, it's gonna fucking happen. Might as well just done it right there. I, I, I don't know. I mean, anyway. 
more acquisitions of SmackDown Live. Sin Cara is now on SmackDown Live. Rusev is now on SmackDown Live. Are we supposed to take them seriously? Especially Sin Cara. And Rusev hasn't been Rusev ever since he lost to Roman freaking Reigns. I mean, yeah. So Aiden English is on his own. He said, now the spotlight, and the actual spotlight comes out. He's like, it's on me, and he starts singing, and I'm like, stop singing, stop singing, stop singing. Next thing you know, the perfect 10 comes out, Ty Dillinger against Aiden English, and well, what do you know, Ty Dillinger actually wins. They're going to try to hype up Ty Dillinger, in my opinion, as a glorified mid-carder, but he has to get past these fucking Hammonagers first. He has to get past these jobbers, whatever you want to call them, first in order for him to get there. To the mid card level, and they actually maybe get a mid card championship, which I'm hoping that happens down the road. But anyway, uh, Lana is coming. Um, so that wasn't a package deal with Rusev. Um, so Lana and Rusev came individually, but Jizz and Jizzette came as a package. Wait, is Lana gonna actually get in the ring and wrestle, or she's gonna dance on that chair all the time like they showed in that motherfucking? little montage of her you know showing up <clears throat> okay fine so you have Dolph Ziggler come to the ring and he's like look on the superstar shake up spoiler alert I'm still here on Smackdown Live and I'm gonna be here to do what I do best and that's steal the show you haven't been stealing shit lately you haven't been doing shit lately ever since you lost to the Miz and turned heel, your career is pretty much over at this point. No one gives a fuck about Ziggler. And that's what losing to The Miz does. If you actually look at it, oh, wait, Apollo Crews was about to be something. He lost to The Miz. Kalisto lost to The Miz. Dolph Ziggler lost to The Miz. Yeah, they lost to somebody with barely any talent at all, if none. That ruined their careers. That ruined their pushes. That ruined their fucking track as far as being something but anyway out comes shinsuke nakamura yeah he does his intro there was no violinist this time but oh well he hits the ring and Dolph ziggler is like yeah who are you and it's like what the fuck you mean who is he the crowd is actually singing his theme music what you think that we're stupid and we don't know who he is and as soon as he asks who are you who do you think who, who are you a Nakamura chant breaks out. Of course. Now, he says, my name is Shinsuke Nakamura. At least Dolph stood his ground for a little while and tried to super kick. He didn't just bail and leave and run like a certain pussy that we all know. But anyway, he tries to super kick Shinsuke blocks it, <laughs> and yeah, and okay, there was a little stare down or whatever, but huh, Dolph actually leaves, and Shinsuke does his bow, but again, at least Dolph tried, at least Dolph did stand his ground for a little bit, oh, and a new day is coming to SmackDown Live, okay, Kofi is injured, and he won't be back for a while, so are they going to delay the new day coming... I don't know. There was, and they got vanquished by the Revival. They're the longest tag team champions ever in WWE history. I mean, I, I don't know. This is just... Yeah, what a shake-up, folks. Yeah, what a shake-up. And speaking of the shake-up, oh, they traded announcers. David Untuga is now on Raw. Byron Saxon is on SmackDown Live now. Oh, yeah, what a shake-up. Oh, my God, yeah. <sighs> In your opinion, who got the better end of the shakeup? I would like to leave. I, I would like to know. Leave a comment below for that. So you have the main event of the night, the triple threat match between AJ Styles, Sami Zayn, and Baron Corbin. I will say it. This was a good fucking match. It was. It actually showcased Corbin as a threat. It showcased AJ Styles as far as being the man that he says he is and his talent. And it actually shows Sami Zayn of being a potential upper mid-carter maybe main eventer someday 
This match had a lot of cool spots to it. This match had a lot of cool moves to it. This match barely had anything to have any gripes over. It was a pretty good fucking match. It was. And AJ Styles actually fucking won. So down the road, he's going to have a United States Championship opportunity. Now, AJ Styles is still owed a WWE Championship match one-on-one, so I don't understand the United States Championship thing, but anyway, we still have no idea if Kevin Owens is actually going to keep the belt at payback. Maybe Jericho will win, and then we'll have AJ versus Jericho 5, because we never got that tiebreaker. We had four matches between them. Their last match was at WrestleMania. It was two wins apiece. Let them have it for a championship this time with AJ coming out on top. And give Jericho a proper send-off. A handshake, a hug maybe. Do that. But I don't think that Jericho's going to win the United States Championship back. He could, and then Kevin Owens can go aim for the WWE Championship because Orton is going to vanquish Bray Wyatt. We already know that. And who's going to challenge Orton after that? But anyway... Um, that was SmackDown Live, and again, the shakeup, I guess, is over, but, damn, this is just, I don't know, maybe we have to see what feuds that they come with and how things play out, because, I don't know, this is just, maybe this is the beginning of something good and something new, new rivalries, new championship runs, maybe, and new great fucking matches, I hope. I would hope that happens, but I'm not going to hold my breath. I, I'm not going to, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I'm a wrestling fan, but still, I, I try to follow logic as much as I fucking can, so, yeah, but anyway, what did you think about the show? Am I full of shit? Do you agree or disagree? Leave your comments below, and don't forget to hit that like button, hit subscribe. I'm always open for debate about wrestling, so please, WWE Make this shake-up count. Drop kicks, body slams. Throw motherfuckers over the top rope. Both be hitting the floor. Yes, I'm a wrestling fan. This is the theme. And I'll see you later. Credits.